Hello and welcome to part two of a video series created for a student studying CFD analysis of a quadcopter. In this video, you will learn how to import geometry and add local and global sizing for surface mesh creation. You will also learn how to add boundary layers and complete your mesh with a volume mesh. You can launch ANSYS Fluent Meshing in two ways. You can start from ANSYS Discovery, which we covered in the previous part of the video series, or you can launch ANSYS Fluent Meshing in Standalone Mode. To launch ANSYS Fluent Meshing in Standalone Mode, similar to ANSYS Discovery, you can go to the Start menu in Windows Machines, search for ANSYS Fluent, and then launch ANSYS Fluent in Meshing Mode. The ANSYS Fluent Meshing Launcher allows you to apply some settings before applying the meshing setup. One of the settings is the capability level that depends on the license availability through your company or your workgroup. The other setting is solver options. You can go for double precision if you have a multi-phase simulation or a simulation with high gradients. You can also define the parallel setting. This is your ANSYS Fluent Meshing Interface. These are the tasks you have to complete for meshing. ANSYS Fluent Meshing will guide you through the workflow, and if necessary, you can add extra tasks through the advanced options for a high level of control on your meshing. The first step would be to import the geometry. You can control your surface mesh by adding some local sizing. We can try some local sizing for the propellers. So you can say yes, then try to find the rotor walls. You can select multiple items, then define the target mesh size as two and add local sizing. The next step would be defining some global sizing. Global sizing will cover the entire geometry for mesh creation. For the global sizing, we need to define minimum and maximum sizes. Please remember that the maximum face size should be approximately 10% of the cross-sectional spacing for internal flows, and the minimum size should be small enough to allow the resolution of the small features. We can try the minimum size of 2 mm, and then the maximum size of 40. The default settings for the curvature normal angle should be okay for this study. In general, the finer curvature normal angle creates a finer surface mesh. The next setting is the number of cells per gap. The default is 1, but when you have a narrow region, it is recommended to go for 3. The scope of proximity can be changed to faces and edges. Now you can generate the surface mesh by pressing this button. After surface mesh creation, the maximum skewness is reported in the console. We have a good maximum skewness here, but if the skewness is not right, then you can just go to generate the surface mesh, right-click, and then add an extra task to improve the surface mesh. Now we have to describe the geometry. For this study, we haven't included solid bodies, and we have only fluid regions. For the solid bodies, it's going to be some void regions, so describe the geometry as it is. At this stage, the update boundaries will pop up. You can change them here or later inside ANSYS Fluence Solving Mode. Next, you can update regions. In this study, we are going to have four fluid regions for the rotors, so change them to fluid. They are going to be defined as rotational zones. Then we have one zone for the enclosure. For the main body of the drone, we are not including the solid body, so that's going to be defined as a dead zone. Update regions. Next is to define boundary layers. For this study, you can just follow the default settings for boundary layers, then go to generate the volume mesh. For this workshop, the polyhedral volume mesh should be okay, and then you can just follow the default settings. Press generate the volume mesh. Depending on your geometry, this mesh creation would take some time, and depending on how fast your computer is, it will vary. When the volume mesh is completed, the orthogonal quality will be reported here. Orthogonal quality usually ranges from 1, which is perfect, to 0, which is very poor, and it is desired to get something larger than 0.1. If the orthogonal quality is not in that range, then you can improve the volume mesh using the Improve Volume Mesh task. To add the extra task, you can go to Generate the Volume Mesh, right-click, Insert New Tasks, and then go for Improve Volume Mesh. Then improve. The number of cells that you've got is 6.5 million. If you try a different minimum and maximum size for the global sizing, you're going to get a different cell number. If you're happy with the mesh, you can save your mesh file for future analysis. To save the mesh, you can go to File and Write Mesh. The next step is to switch to the solution mode. 
Now you are in the solution mode of ANSYS Fluent, and I will cover the details in the next part.